This toy is almost 50 years old, so what has made it stand the test of time and why do collectors want it so bad? We will go over its history, a step-by-step -step guide on how to build it, and why this is the grandfather of so many other Star Wars toys. Let's go! Hey, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, and if you don't know what I do, we do things a little different, where we just don't actually show the toy, we really talk about its history and why people should care. So again, what makes this toy so special? Well, it's made of cardboard. It has a goofy name that tries to make it sound exotic, the Land of the Jawas. But it's the history of this toy that makes it so compelling. Star Wars figures. They're the Star Wars early bird set of figures. With this colorful Star Wars picture display stand and certificate to send in to get a set of figures by mail. Kenner started releasing Star Wars toys in 1978, almost a year after the movie came out. And by the time 1979 came around, Star Wars and the toys were a pop culture phenomenon. Kids could not get enough, and action figures flew off the shelves as quick as stores could stock them. Even adult collecting enthusiasts knew this was something special. And with the action figures came play sets. In 1978, two of them. The very majestic Death Star Space Station, a towering scaffold of durable, mold-injected plastic with four levels of play, a top turret gun, and a trash compactor that came with the Dianoga Trash Monster action figure. And the other was not quite as majestic, but since has become a collector's item, the Sears exclusive Cantina Adventure Set, which came with four action figures, including the iconic blue Snaggletooth that was quickly discontinued and replaced with the red Snaggletooth. But the playset itself was made of a thin, flimsy cardboard, a frail and cheap fold-out depiction of the cantina. It looked more like a grammar school stage production than a playset. So imagine little Jimmy getting the cantina adventure set, and then little Johnny getting the Death Star space station. Which friend's house are you going to go to? <laughs> it's a question. And since Kenner released the Cantina Adventure Set as a Sears exclusive, not a lot of these exist in pristine condition or boxed, but they moderately sold well back in 1978, so this proved that they could move units of a cheaply made toy, primarily made of cardboard. And in 1979, they took that mantra when they designed the Land of the Jawas action playset. In this early concept model that you can still see in early Star Wars catalog booklets and card backs, the early designs, although crude, had the same basic idea and play features. All of us must learn to waste less energy. Simply by keeping our thermostats, for instance, at 65 degrees in the daytime and 55 degrees at night, we could save half the current shortage of natural gas. In the late 1970s, petroleum products were expensive to make and the economy was grinding to a halt. So parents were not looking to buy overly expensive items for their kids at the time. When the cost of living was getting higher, things like gas and groceries saw an uptick at the cash register. This was the era of which the Land of the Jawas toy was born into. Escape pod landing! Where am I? It's the new Star Wars Land of the Jawas that you put together. Action figures sold separately. Released in 1979, the Land of the Jawas allowed kids to replay the scenes in Star Wars that depicted where Luke buys the droids from the Jawas. It retailed for $10.99, which in today's money is $46.57, so not a cheap toy for parents to buy given the economy at the time. On its first release, it came in the classic Star Wars packaging with a boy in a white turtleneck on the front happily playing with the set. The same image is used on the back. On the sides are frames from the actual movie along with stills of the playset features. It was later reissued in 1979. The only difference in the packaging was an action figure rebate offer sticker. And in the Kenner Canada version, it was issued with a free cloth cape Jawa action figure. Across the pond, the British version of the Land of the Jawas action playset took a different form and left out some key features. And instead of the more expensive to make, mold-injected plastic base, it was made with vacuum-form plastic. This was due to a petroleum crisis in Britain, which made mold injection plastics expensive to produce. And Palatoy at the time also couldn't get the injection molds from the USA, plus modify the production units for injection molding the toy to scale distribution in time. Although the Land of the Jawas action playset was featured in Kenner's 1980 catalog with Empire Strikes Back packaging, it was only ever issued in original Star Wars boxes. 
and never was reissued for other Star Wars movie releases. And here is the package I just got. If you want to see the full exclusive unboxing, there's a link in my description. I ordered this playset from a private collector who knew I was on the lookout for this playset and sent me some very detailed pictures. I've bought from this collector before, and when you're buying vintage items like this, you really want to buy from people you trust and people that know that what they're selling is authentic, complete, and also that they will package and send the item to you protected so it doesn't get damaged while in transit to you. And kudos to the seller because this packaging was perfect. And there's another item in here which I'm going to go over in another episode. So let's go through this box just to make sure that you know what came inside it if you were to buy it in 1979. The box I have isn't in the best of shape, but as a display piece, it is an awesome version of this box and in great collectible shape. Inside the box, it originally should have come with these items. The plastic base with a cardboard insert, a Star Wars mini catalog, a sticker sheet, the instructions, the plastic escape pod, one plastic baggie that contained parts for the playset. Inside the baggie, you have one elevator base, one elevator pin, four action pegs, two elevator guide rails, one action button, one snapper cap, one action arm snapper, one action stand, one battle action lever, and four cardboard pieces, one sand crawler body, one sand crawler backdrop, and two sand crawler base supports. If you get the box that has the special rebate offer, it would have come with this paper that shows how you can get up to $3 cash refund on the purchase of a Jawa action figure. When you get these playsets nowadays, you need to clean them first. I was lucky, and the one I got came in really good shape and already clean, but sometimes the previous owners never clean them. For the base, you can put warm water into a bowl, and using a drop of fragrance-free dish soap, and using a soft brush toothbrush, you can gently scrub off any dirt and dust, then using a lint-free towel, dry it off, then let this air dry for a day away from sunlight. Then for the items with stickers, like the escape pod, you have to be a little more careful not to get the stickers wet, so I use fragrance-free and alcohol-free wipes. Then I let this air dry for a day away from sunlight. I use the same wipes for the cardboard just to simply wipe off the surface where the art is. Be careful not to get the back of the cardboard wet or the sides, just the areas that have printed art. You can also use a fiber-free cloth that you would use to clean your sunglasses. It's just to get basic dust off without oversaturating the cardboard board with moisture. And you can get the items I use to clean my collectibles in the links in my description. Now let's go over the instructions and how to put this classic toy together. It's honestly not too hard, but since this playset is over 40 years old and the cardboard is fragile, it's this part that always makes me nervous. First, let's assemble the base. And nowadays, when you buy these, the base and the parts will already be assembled, but in case it's not and you get these loose, Flip over the base and on the bottom, you would position the action arm snapper as shown. Holding this action arm snapper in place, turn the base over and pop the cap on top of the base at this hole. Flip the base over again and install the battle action lever under the base. The handle will fit into the slot. Holding the battle action lever in place, flip the base over to the top and place the action stand on the hole, lining it up with the pin holes. Push down and this snaps into place. Then finding the hole for the action button, snap the action button into place. Now let's put the sand crawler cardboard structure together. Get the sand crawler backdrop and slide the elevator guide rails into place at the bottom center opening shown here. They will gently slide into place without any force. Get the sand crawler body and fold this back along the lines. Put the action pegs into the holes and turn them a quarter turn to lock in place. Guide the sand crawler body onto the sand crawler background and guide the bottom flaps into the slots first. Be really, really careful here and not too forceful as you don't want to fray the cardboard as you put this into the slots. After that's done, do the same for the top tabs. Turning the backdrop around to the rear, fold the top end of the sand crawler body over the backdrop and lock the flaps into place. Now find the tread supports and fold them together. Slide the tread supports into the slots at the bottom of the sand crawler and gently guide the tabs into the body. Now, having the base in place on a flat surface, guide the tread supports into the base slots. Now for the elevator platform. Get the elevator platform and the elevator pin. 
line up the elevator platform in the front of the sand crawler's elevator opening, put it in place, then in the rear of the elevator shaft, push the elevator pin into the elevator platform, locking it in place between the elevator guide rails. Once it's all together, you really have five zones of play for this playset. You have the escape pod zone, where R2-D2 and C-3PO landed on Tatooine. You can open the hatch on the pod and place two action figures inside that fit securely on pegs that are on the bottom of the escape pod. Then there's the droid elevator, where you can place an action figure on the elevator platform and move them up and down using the lift feature on the back of the playset. The battle zone is where you can place one action figure on the action stand and another on the action button. Then, by sliding the action lever, the action button pops up and knocks over an action figure, simulating battle. There is also a cave where R2 can hide from the approaching Jawas. And on the back of the playset, you have the sand crawler compartment where you can house four action figures and rest them on the action pegs. And I think this playset is very important in the Kenner vintage history because it was the first one to use this design. The Hoth Ice Planet Adventure Set, released in 1980, was the second playset to use it. And the Rebel Command Center Adventure Set, released as a Sears exclusive in 1981, was the final playset to use this design as a base model. So is this the best playset of them all? It was fun to play with, yes. But as a toy, it does leave a lot to be desired. As this is a cardboard playset and it doesn't have a real sand crawler where you can open up, play with, use as a storage unit. Now, I think if that would have happened, it would truly be a magnificent playset. But like I said, I get why they created it like this. The petroleum crisis and just to get toys on the shelves quickly but it is very important because it was the first to use this design. So let's mark this toy off of our list, the Land of the Jawas action playset that I got from a private collector for $237.50 with shipping included in the price. And I get one more playset closer to my goal of collecting them all. And you can get this collecting checklist for yourself at the PadawanCollector.com. There's a link in my description. And join me on the next episode when I go over this toy the Rebel Command Center, and the adventure I had to go on to get this. So to see that video, click on your screen right now. And as always, my friends, thank you, and I will see you next time. If you're new to the channel, check out the welcome video, or just check out the next episode. And please subscribe if you want to follow the journey. And remember, there is no shame in being a Padawan.